so today I want to put the, um, I ordered some speakers and I wanted to go ahead and install those. But uh, before I do, uh, I've been working kind of like just preliminary tuning. Uh, I don't have all the jets I need, so I had to order some jets uh, just to get the uh, AFRs where I want them. And uh, just kind of doing the basic stuff, you know, setting the, the four corner idles and, uh, you know, the, the curb idle and all that stuff. So, and also messing with the timing. So uh, I'm going to take it out front really quickly and just give it a couple, uh, just like, just get, put a little load on the motor um, and see what it does. I know that uh, my timing is a little bit off. I don't know why. I don't know why the distributor is giving me like erratic timing and I still haven't got a new distributor yet. So I'm still messing with that old, it's not old, it's brand new, but um, that cheap distributor. And uh, I really don't like it, but it's what I'm working with right now. So when I get a new one, it's, I'm hoping it's gonna be easier to, to time this thing because it, the timing is just jumping all over the place. So anyway, let me take it really quick out front and um, see what it does. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and do the speakers. All right guys, so that was a quick little uh, rip out front. Uh, we definitely have an issue with the distributor, okay? Uh, I have the timing set at around eight degrees base uh, at idle, and for whatever reason, this distributor is advancing the timing too much, uh, or it's jumping around. I don't know which, but I could hear it uh, detonating a little bit. You could hear under load, like when I would put it in second gear and then kind of load the engine, um, you could hear it just a little tiny, tick like a ping okay and that's detonation so you know i backed it backed it off really quickly and didn't let it do it for very long but that tells me there's definitely something wrong with the distributor because if i have it set at eight degrees that's really low i mean you should i should be able to have this set around 12 between 12 and 14 degrees base timing okay and to have it set at eight and still have it pinging uh, is definitely too it's it's the distributor messing me up so i got to get that replaced uh, everything else seems to be working really good. Uh, I got the, you know, the four corner idle set pretty good. Uh, I got, I don't have the, all the jets I need to uh, try to, I want to lean out the primary a little bit. And uh, all these jets I have here uh, were for my race car and it was a much bigger carburetor and I was using much bigger jets and I wasn't using power valves in those. So I was, uh, you know, you jet up when you don't use power valves. So anyway, I don't have the jets I need. Uh, I ordered some from Amazon, and so those should be here next week sometime. But the best I can get the idle circuit to, you know, the best AFR I can get is around 12 to 1. So I need to jet down a little bit to see if I can get that around between 13 and 14 to 1. Uh, so it idles nice and clean. But 
yeah, I mean, other than that, everything works really good. Starts right up every time. Um, idle's good. Coming off of, you know, throttle, it goes right back down to idle. Um, you know, fuel pressure stays nice and steady, right around five and a half. And the everything, the charging system works. Everything works. My only thing is distributor. That that distributor has got to go. So, anyway, uh, moving on from that, I just wanted to show you guys a quick little hit on it. And you know, I've been doing a lot of work on it behind the scenes and not videotaping it. So, just wanted to show you kind of where I was. But so I picked up this uh, speaker system here. This is an uh, Alpine. The part numbers are here: S S57. These are components. Okay, this is going to be for the the doors. Uh, and the uh, in the dash we're gonna put the tweeter in the dash okay so we have those uh, they come with a crossover these are like very budget oriented speakers they're not that expensive so if you if you do plan on like upgrading your speakers I recommend getting these because of the uh, component style you know it has crossovers and you can relocate the tweeter uh, into the dash which is what we're gonna do um, right up in here uh, so I'm gonna have to make like a little bracket or something. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it, but we'll make something that will hold the tweeter in there. Okay, and then um, we got this head unit here. This is uh, just a uh, USB receiver. So it's, there's no CD player. Uh, I don't even have CDs anymore. So it's just, it's got Bluetooth. It's got a USB hookup here. And what I like about it is it has that like classic Alpine look, like Alpine, hasn't changed the way their radios looked in a long time. Uh, so I really, really like that old school look to it. Okay guys, so this is the radio. I actually, I did open this already to grab the, um, the little bracket that it slides into um, in the dash. So, uh, but yeah, it comes with your bezel, detachable plate. I mean, look at that. That's like so classic Alpine. I mean, they really haven't changed the way that everything looks you know, on the Alpines, you know, you got this blue here and yeah, I really like the way that kind of makes it look old school. So got that. And here's the harness that we're going to be wiring to uh, the other harness. Uh, looks, this looks like um, hands-free for talking on your phone, which I don't, I never use those. And here's the uh, radio. Uh, one thing to note about the, the one thing to note about these Bluetooth radios, or not Bluetooth, but um, just the uh, media receivers, okay, that don't have a CD player. The beauty, the nice thing about it is, is that they're super light. I mean, this thing is weighs nothing, okay. So that's really nice. Uh, and nobody uses CDs anymore, so uh, all my music is on my phone, and uh, it should hook up right through the Bluetooth and uh, and work perfect there. So, so we got that. That's, that should be really easy to install. And um, let's go ahead and look at these. So these are pretty much what Fox bodies use, the five by seven, six by eight. It's either or, it's got two different holes to accommodate. Uh, these, these are, this is what fits Fox bodies. So. There's always people asking that question. So these have a little trim ring, which we won't be using, I don't think. Uh, yeah, these are real nice. So, got the magnet on the back, got a tweeter, and then, um, all right, so. Open these up. And again, guys, these are actually pretty affordable. I think these were just a little over a hundred bucks a piece. So, I mean, for component speakers, that's not bad at all. So, yeah. Look pretty nice. Um, and like I said, it comes with these tweeters and that'll work really good in the dash. So let me go ahead and get the, um, I'll go ahead and start with the 6x9s, or the 5x7, 6x8s, and uh, we'll go ahead and get those in there, and um, we'll go from there. 
Okay, so these are pretty easy to do. Uh, you just kind of mount these little screws on here um, and leave a little space so it can move up. And then you're gonna pull, push it up through these holes here and then kind of go up against this notch here. Um, let see if I can show you. Just like that. Then you just kind of hold the bottom while you screw it in. All right, there you go. Kind of sits in like that, little notches. It's actually really perfect. I mean, it's it's like the exact size it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and do that one, and then we'll move on to the doors and the tweeters, and um, then install the head unit. Oh, it also does come with these little spacers that you could like try to use, uh, but I think that it fit pretty good without it. Um, like I could have put this underneath it, and then it would have kind of. I don't know, create a seal, but it, it fits so good that I don't think it needs it. I mean, you can see how good it fits around the edges. So I'm gonna leave the spacer out. I don't, I'm not gonna use it. So anyway, um, yeah, one more to go and then we'll move on to the doors. So I think most everybody knows how to take these door panels off. Uh, you kind of move your, if you got, you know, the manual windows like I do, you just, Take that off, that off, uh, your little cover for the rear view mirror adjuster, that screw, this screw, there's a bolt behind here and here. And then do yourself a favor and get one of these tools that you can get behind and pop out all of the uh, plastic, you know, the press tabs that go into the back of the door. That way you don't damage them and you, you can just put them right back on. Um, I do actually have a bag of extras, but uh, it, this is really simple. I'm just going to take the door off and then we'll uh, get to the speaker and then I'll, I'll pick it back up right there. Okay guys, so here's what I come up with to hold the tweeters. Okay, these are uh, some of the Lexan I had left over from the windows I made in the black car. And uh, I just kind of copied uh, this shape here and cut a hole in it and the tweeter mounts to it. It's got like a screw on the back of it and basically is just going to sit like that, the two holes. Uh, I didn't get the shape perfect, but it's okay because it's all going to be covered. It's just something to hold it in position there. And uh, yeah, I made two of them, one for that side too. So uh, yeah, let me get that wired up. Uh, let me get this in. I've already wired up some of the, uh, most of the harness here and uh, the back one the back speakers are wired up so let me just get these last two in wire this up and then uh, we can try it out see what it sounds like okay so the tweeter comes with this little crossover here and we're basically just gonna leave it wrapped up like that and I'm gonna put it in the dash down in here uh, you know you typically you could like I could run it from here all the way to there but these wires are already in parallel with this anyway, so you don't have to run them through the door and all that. You can just splice into your factory wiring and makes it a little bit easier. So, you know, these will hide back in there. There's plenty of room for them to stuff down in there and uh, you won't see them. So let me get that done. And then I'll move on to this door once I won't show you that one. And then um, plug in the radio and we'll be done. so there you have it uh the radio is installed speakers and all um it's all done so uh yeah i think it turned out really good uh i did make a little bezel that goes around the outside here um again i just used some uh really thin aluminum and since the radio is so light um you know it doesn't it doesn't move at all so it sits in there really good but anyway now we're uh now we can go down the road blasting our uh alice in chains so I don't know how much of that I'm going to put in the video because I'll probably get copyrighted, but uh, maybe I'll just put a clip or here, you know, a clip in there, here or there. So, but I think this came out good. Uh, once I put the covers on here, you know, uh, it'll uh, cover all that up. 
But yeah, these are directional too. Like you can move them around. So I got, if I wanted to, I could bounce it off the windshield here or kind of maybe bounce it off the, the door. Just whatever, you know, see what sounds good. But yeah, I think it came out good. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. It's getting a little long. Uh, hopefully the next video we'll be doing some tuning and when I get the jets in and we'll uh, do some on-road tuning and do some logging of, you know, taking some video of the wideband so I can see what it's doing. And um, definitely gonna get a new distributor. This distributor is driving me crazy, so. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video and a um, little step-by-step -step on how to do this. I mean, pretty easy. There's probably a million videos out there on how to do it, but just figured I'd put in my little two cents and um, show you guys. So that's going to do it. Check you all later.